This is a touch-sensitive LED lamp soldering kit. I purchased this particular kit from eBay, although they are available from alternative sellers and I'll provide links to both in the description. As you can see, this is fully sealed up, so let's take a look inside and see what you get. So, as we can see, there is a nice comprehensive instruction sheet in multiple languages, so that's very nice. It does remind us that the lamp is made of ceramic material and is easy to break, so we must handle it with care. The short pin is positive and the long pin is negative, so that's good to know. So, opposite of what you might find with the capacitor. But it says the short pin of the capacitor is negative and the long pin is positive. Input voltage of 5 volts DC. Um, there's a touch chip in included and that's actually in this little box here as well with the LED lamps. We should check the resistance of the multimeter, um, and we can turn the lamp on and off with a short press on the touch button. There's also some instructions about dimming the uh, lamps up and down by pressing the button for a long period of time. So that's quite neat. There's also a schematic diagram and some uh, illustrations of how the device should look when it's fully soldered. So, might need to refer to those later. Here is our main PCB, quite nice little black PCB. And all of the required values are marked with resistors on there and capacitors, which is quite nice. So that's going to make it easy to put everything into place. As it says, it's five volts. So we have a five volt indicator there and we'll need to assemble some wires onto that, which I'll do as we get to that stage. It does show us the positive and negative ends of the LED bars as well, which is quite handy. Okay, so as mentioned, obviously we have these LED bars. We actually have four, so they provide us with an extra one in case things get damaged. Um, and there is also that touch chip they mentioned. We have what looks to be a transistor here as well. Um, yeah, I think that is indeed a transistor. Um, we have a few capacitors, we have some ceramic types and some electrolytic types, and then we have our resistors. So to avoid damaging the, um, the LEDs here, I'm going to avoid doing those until the end because they will be fragile. I am going to put this chip on first though um, to make sure that's in place because that's going to be in the middle and once I've got the components on it will be hard to keep this flat. So let's go ahead and turn the soldering iron on. So um, I've switched back to the knife tip. It's a little bit worn this knife tip so I probably could do having a new one but um, using a knife tip today. Have a solder here. Probably won't need any blue tack for the moment. But what we will need is this little chip. And so this is the touch chip. Let's just pop it on the mat for a second and we can close this box up. And there should be a pin one marking on this chip and there is a little dimple just in this lower corner here and that aligns with the dot indicator on the board here. So the chip goes around this way. So what I'm gonna do is just tin up one pad and we will try and move the chip into place. Okay, so I've bridged two of the pins here, but that's fine, I'll fix that in a moment. Um, I just need to make sure I sold all of these pins in place. So it could be a little bit further down here, but actually that's reasonably well aligned on the pads and it's a little difficult to do a bit of a distance. So I think that'll do. Let's just finish soldering up the rest of the pins and I'll make sure there's no bridges. Okay, so that's all soldered up. You probably saw I used the flux pin there just to loosen up that bridged solder connection. Okay, so that's the chip done and that all looks good. So let's go ahead and do the through hole components on the other side. So this is our 47K resistor. So there's yellow, purple, black, and red. So four, seven, zero, and then two zeros. And there's a brown tolerance band. So that one just goes here. Um, as it says in the, in the instructions, we can of course use a multimeter to double check that. So here's my multimeter, it's on the 200k range, so let's just check this resistor. Uh, 
And there we go, 46.4K, so that's perfectly fine. Now we have a brown, black, 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 brown. So this could go around either way. This one is a one, zero, zero with a zero additional zero, so that's 100 ohm. And again, we can check that one as well. So let's put this on the 2000 range. And here, 101, 100 ohms, there you go, perfectly good. So that one needs to go in this one here, 100 R. So this one looks like a brown, black, black, brown with a brown tolerance band. And so that would be one zero zero with one additional zero, which makes it a 1K resistor. Let's double check that one on the multimeter. And there you go, just under a thousand ohms. Here we go, another 100 ohm. This is the same pattern we saw before. Of course, we can double check that one as well. There we go. Uh, this one will be a 1K resistor. Again, same pattern, brown, black, black, brown. There we go. And that should leave this as our last 100, which it indeed is, brown, black, 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 with the brown tolerance band, and that 100 just goes here. Let's check that one just to be sure. And there we go. So I think we should do these capacitors next. Um, and because these ones have got to lay down, I think it makes sense to do these. Now these are both supposed to be 47 microfarad. So let's just check. Um, both of these say 47 microfarad on them. I don't know if you can make that out on the camera. And while we're in the testing mood, of course I can bring in my other component tester, this one here, and we can make sure but these are 47 as well, or as close as they can be. So I'm just going to short them out, because you should short them out before testing capacitors. So you can just do that by touching both the leads on a single piece of metal, and the other capacitor will work just fine. And then we can pop this into two different terminals on the tester. So I've got it in one and two there. And we press the button. And there we go, this is a 55 microfarad apparently, which is perfectly fine for a 47. Of course, you can short it out again, and we should short out the other one. If we're going to test that as well, like so. And we can pop this one in as well. And this one's coming out as 54.9, so very close, very well matched. Again, I'm just going to short it, short it out to make sure it's discharged. So we need to get these in the right way around. And as it says, for these, the shorter lead is negative, but it's actually clearly marked on the can here, so that's not really a problem. And we just want to pop these in and fold them down. So I'm going to use these tweezers because I have them here, but I just want to fold these legs down. And now the positive will go through the positive and the negative through the negative. Let's do this other one, just like so. Okay, so let's do the ceramic capacitors next. Um, and so we have uh, one, two 104s and a 103 here, so that's 100 nanofarad and 10 nanofarad. So these should be clearly marked. So this is 103, 103, and this is 104, and again, another 104. Now, I'm gonna test these, but my experience has been that these cheaper capacitors tend to be a little bit rough, but we're gonna use them regardless, but I just thought it'd be fun again to test them and see how we're doing here. So this is one of the 104s, 
And this one's coming out only 55 nanofarad, right? So that's about half what it's supposed to be. And I have a, another 104 here. Let's pop that in. 60 nanofarad. So I've shown this on a previous video um, when I was assembling the expansion board for the Heathkit ET3400, the ETA 3400 expansion board. Um, and I showed that there was different types of capacitors that could be used. Um, and I used a multi-layer one, which actually provided a, a good reading. And I had some cheap ones like this that really didn't provide a good reading. But let's try this 103 and see how this is doing. And this is doing 13 nanofarad. So um, that's pretty good. It's actually better than the 10 nanofarad specified. Um, but yeah, these are slightly disappointing, poorly matched and poorly specced. In this case, as I say, I'm going to use them, but um, generally speaking, you'd want high quality capacitors. Okay, so now we just have Q1, which is our transistor, and we just follow the outline here. Of course, we can pop it in our tester and make sure it's working as expected. Should be fine. So I'm just going to need to display the legs very slightly for the tester. I'm going to put them back again into position when we put them into the board. So just for fun, let's put it in the tester as well. So one, two, three. And there you go, you can see this is a BJT NPN transistor. So I say matching the silhouette, pop that in, push it down as far as it's going to go, not going to force it any further. Next, we are going to want to put in the LED bars, but I'm going to skip ahead and do the wires now. And that's just so, again, we can do the LED bars last to avoid damaging them. So as this is going to be the top, I think I'm going to have the wires come at the back. So I'm actually going to put them through from here and solder them on this side. So I've got a couple of wires here. I'm just going to tin them. Okay, so there's our power connection. And then we just need to put in those LED bars. Now to say we've got four in the box, which is kind of nice of them. So what we should do is we should line these up and it tells us that the long one is the negative. Now one of these has a bit of a bent pin there. So I think I'm going to avoid that one and we'll use that one as a spare if we have to. We need to match the pads, long pad and the short pad. So I don't know which way these are supposed to go up. They do look like they have slightly different colorations on them, depending on the side. So that's interesting. I'm going to put the um, brighter orange side up, I think. What I think I should do is see if these will light up with my multimeter. So again, I put it on diode test mode. And this lets us do that diode test. But what it also lets us do is see if we can light up an LED. Now, these ones, I assume, run at 5 volts. So hopefully, um, we'll be able to see if they do indeed light up. And there you go. So I do think the more orange side here is the side we want to use. So if I just gently perch this on the blue tack, there we go. That's the side that seems to have the LEDs, the orange side up, as I suspected. And if I turn it up the other way, you can see the LEDs are on the underside, hopefully. Always worth checking before we actually pop that solder on the board, of course. So now we know we are safe to solder these in. And now we can do the other pads on the other ends.
Okay, so I think what we should do now then is have a quick go with a power supply and see if this works. So I've got my old maps in power supply just here. Um, this one, as I say, goes three, 4.5 and six volts. So we're gonna try it 4.5. And if I then connect up these wires, we can see what happens. And there we go. That comes on quite nicely at 4.5 volts. Apparently you can hold the button in the middle to fade this up and down. So that's on minimum. And then back up to maximum. And we can touch to turn it on and off. And that's quite nice. It has this nice fade effect as it turns on and off. So I think this is a really neat little kit. As I say, um, I got this one from eBay because I wanted it to arrive reasonably quickly so I could make this video for you all. But as I say, there are other sellers available as well. And I'll link to an AliExpress link for a similar product as well if you prefer. And of course, you'd have to wait longer for that delivery. But I hope you found this video about this touch-sensitive LED lamp interesting. And I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.